Good morning, everyone, and thank you very much for joining me. This is the Morning Market Review. My name is Russell Sean, Senior Market Specialist at FXM, and my um, email address is rshow.fxm.com. Today is Friday, the 6th of May, 2022. Just going to bring up a high-risk investment warning. I'll keep this on screen for a few moments. Hey Zanetta, good morning to you. Uh, Raymond, and nice to have you on the webinar. Welcome back and uh, good morning to you. Thank you everyone for uh, joining this morning. Uh, very much appreciate it. Let's just uh, bring up the market commentaries disclaimer here. I'll keep this on screen for a few moments. Hey Anna, good morning to you. Nice to have you on the webinar. All right, just the um, references, market scope 2.0. Uh, we'll start off with CNBC uh, morning article. We'll take a look. Uh, we'll use TradingView uh, quite heavily today. All right, let's just bring up this. Um, hang on, before I... Uh, before I bring up the... Before I go into the... Um, the CNB article. I'm just pasting the um, the link for this uh, NFP trade uh, later today. So, if you'd like to um, join us, click on that uh, link and take you to the registration page. Okay. Let's uh, let's see what CNBC has uh, for us. Yes, the headline reads, European stocks set to pull back after Wall Street sell-off. And uh, it reads, as European markets are expected to pull back slightly on Friday, tracking global caution after Wall Street posted its worst day since 2020. Britain's uh, FTSE 100 is seen around 20 points down, that's set to slide by 57. Dow Jones Industrial Average plunged more than a thousand points and the NASDAQ Composite fell nearly 5% on Thursday, raising Wednesday's rally. Initial relief over, the, over the, the Federal Reserve's reeling out of a more aggressive hikes seemingly gave way once again to fears that a sharp hiking cycle in order to rein in red hot inflation could harm economic growth. U.S. stock futures were a little change in early pre-market trade on Friday ahead of the closely watched April jobs report. Shares in Asia Pacific also largely declined on Friday with Hong Kong's Hang Seng Index leading regional losses as tech stocks sold off following the tech-heavy Nasdaq's overnight drop stateside. Earnings continue to affect individual share price movements in Europe with Adidas and British Airways parent IAG among those reporting before the bell on Friday. Investor, uh, investors also monitoring Russia's progress in eastern and southern Ukraine as its forces appear to have escalated assault in, uh, in the regions. And um, uh, there's just a breaking headline here on CNBC. Russia renews assault on Azov's Azov style steel plant ahead of Victory Day. So Victory Day, I believe, for uh, them is the 9th of May, uh, effectively celebrating the victory over the, the Nazis in World War II. So we, um, we have that as the, as the breaking news. Uh, and as just writing, yeah, uh, worst crisis since the Second World War, Germany prepares for a Russian gas uh, embargo and the economists say a ban would be catastrophic for the country's economy, but many companies expect it to happen anyway. That's from the Financial Times. Yeah, so um, the uh, European uh, Commission, uh, I believe her name is van der Leyen, I beg your pardon, he's put through a proposal to embargo um, Russian oil within, um, within six months. 
and all other um, um, produced energy products to be phased out by the end of the year. For that to happen, uh, all 27 member states need to um, need to vote in favour of it. So um, that's uh, certainly um, a huge um, variable that's now in play. So every week we're getting these huge variables that come into play, and in economics, each uh, each variable needs to be analysed and each variable can impact on other variables, which makes the analysis extremely difficult uh, because um, how, uh, how your assumptions um, you know, are made um, on one day may change given a, given a, a, new, uh, a new variable the next day. It's just crazy at the moment. It's, it's full of uncertainty. Um, what I wanted to show you guys, just to start off, I understand there's been a massive sell-off, but uh, something that I think we need to just go through, if you'll bear with me, we're going to do trading view first, then we'll do market scope um, after, but I wanted to bring in, we have looked at this before, but I've, but I've extended the analysis and I think it's painting a really scary picture. Um, so what we have here is the um, US uh, PPI year, year on year, okay, we produce a price index. Um, the, um, the obvious areas uh, to look at are your spikes, okay? Because generally PPI um, is not as, uh, I guess, well focused on as uh, CPI because CPI uh, accounts for the cons consumption part of the aggregate demand, which is about 70% of aggregate demand. So we generally focus on CPI, but these um, spikes, the spikes in PPI um, are very uh, useful, I think, to uh, keep an eye on just what happened previously because we've, we're in the present. Presently, we're spiking, right? So what we want to do here is we want to overlay this with um, US uh, CPI. So I'm just going to press uh, plus here. And um, I'm just going to type in US CPI. And uh, I'm going to uh, put that on a, a new price scale. I'll give it its own scale. Uh, oh, that's not the, I beg your pardon, that's not the series I'm after. Um, let me just do that again. Uh, US core CPI. That's better. Okay, we'll put this on a new price scale. Okay, yeah. It's, uh, much better and um, let's just make this into a comfortable color so we'll just make it uh, black a little thicker and um, what you can see is um, when these these spikes happen maybe even here as well uh, it's the ppi that tends to lead the cpi up ppi leading cpi ppi leading cpi uh, that's what's happening right now as well and um, uh, the obvious question is, well, when do we get some sort of relief in the uh, consumer part of CPR? Because uh, I mentioned yesterday or the day before, I went I went into the supermarket and just price of uh, you know price of things they just gone crazy. Um, so the idea here is, well, let's put it on a, a, a RSR. Put on an RSI just to add a little uh, bit of um, um, sort of an analytical edge, say. So I'm just going to go uh, indicators. RSI. And um, the way that I think we should use the RSI, and uh, of course, there's many other ways to do it, is just when it breaks above. Um, 80, um, or I think last time I used 90, uh, look for it to break back below. So it happens around about there. And we kind of get the, um, it takes sort of a few months and then we start getting the slowdown. Okay. In other words, but look what happens here. PPR, PPR crosses below CPR and then it has that. Yeah. And it's just asking for the settings. I beg your pardon. Uh, same settings, Anna. So it would be 10 and I'm using the median. 
Okay. So um, here it crosses below here, let's say. Uh, you can see that the uh, PPI, that's the blue, has crossed below CPI, leads, um, leads CPI down. Um, I think an argument can make, be made here with a similar that the PPI crosses below, leads CPI down. Um, this perhaps uh, not quite so much um, over here. Um, the, consumer in the consumer prices seem to be quite uh, benign here. But I would suggest it's maybe not sort of a, a spike type of environment, uh, but there's certainly a spike environment where we are right now. Well, we haven't crossed back below the we haven't crossed back below the um, the 80. So, calling for a um, calling for a top in uh, consumer inflation at the moment might be premature. Just take a look what happened with the Bank of England uh, announcement yesterday. They forecasting double digit double digit um, inflation and um, that's you know the, the, the situation we find ourselves in. But there's something else that the Bank of England said in their statement yesterday. They said higher inflation, lower growth. Okay, higher inflation, lower growth. That's by the way, that's a, it's an economic paradox. It's very rare to get inflation and lower growth, but that's the environment we're in. That's the environment we, that's called stagflation. Okay, so what we're going to do here. Okay, and it's saying she had a mortgage last time. This double-digit inflation. Yeah, so we're getting to that part of the analysis as well. And it just bear with me. Uh, this is this is uh, U.S. data, but I think it's very much a proxy for the global inflation environment at the moment. Um, let's take out the um, the RSI just to make space. We we under the, and we understand that the RSI hasn't crossed below um, the over uh, bought area so and 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 PPI is and crossed below CPI right now what we're going to do here is we're going to add a GDP year on year growth because that was a message that come out of came out of a major central bank statement yesterday right let's bring that in so let's go to plus um, okay now I want it, I want the year on year growth. Okay, I'm going to just give it a new price scale as well. All right, and we get this sort of um, heel. Uh, let's see if we can make this a better color. I want to reserve red. I want to reserve red for the next series. Um, uh, let's. I'll just make it a purple here. Yeah. You see that? No, not really. Um, all right, let's make it a. Let's make it this orange. We'll just uh, we'll look at this orange because we've got we've got a lot of um, parts now overlapping one another. All right, so take a look. Um, the black line PPR moving up. Uh, sorry, the blue line PPR moving up. The black line CPR core CPR moving up. What's happening to GDP? It's coming down. There's GDP growth coming down. Go to the next the next spike. PPR moving up, core CPR moving up. What's happening to growth on an absolute level? GDP growth year on year dropping. Okay. Uh, here, this this area here as well, GDP growth dropping. Okay. Um, here, it's this this I wouldn't suggest. It, this is not a similar environment, but I will say that as the PPR is moving up. It does seem to impact on CPI, right? Take a look where we are now, okay? GDP growth coming down, okay? So we're getting inflation pushing up. Look what's happening to GDP growth coming down. What did the Bank of England say yesterday? Double digit inflation, lower growth, okay? So we can see that. Now this is, this is the next part of the uh, graph I'm gonna put in. And this, I think, is the scary part. Okay, watch this.
and employment rate. So we're looking at the youth unemployment rate, which is what's commonly um, quoted. U6 uh, is broader, but U3 uh, makes makes the point. I'm going to make this on a new price scale. And um, this goes back, Anna asked, does labor lag? I think that was your question earlier in the week, Anna. And it's taken a couple of days, so here's your answer. All right. This is the scary part. I'm going to put this there. I'm going to put this there. I'm going to put this there. Put this there. Now what I'll do is I will put a square here because that's where we are. Let's just change the color of the square to a blue square. That's fine. All right. So let's take a look what's happening here. Um, inflation moves up on a production side, inflation moves up on a consumption side, GDP falls, GDP falls, okay, labor lags and then unemployment increases. Next one, okay, Impl inflation up, GDP down, unemployment starts increasing but it, it lags and then gets quite vicious, okay, it's this red, let's make this even thicker. Okay, so it's very apparent now. Next one, GDP down, inflation up. After a lag, employment increases. Next one, okay. Uh, here's inflation up, uh, GDP comes down. Uh, unemployment sort of coincides here with, um, with the, uh, unemployment increase coincides with the GDP, right? With the GDP decline. That brings us to 2022. 2022. All right. This is the scary part. Inflation up. Okay. So core inflation up. All right. GDP down. GDP down. We still need to see the PPI getting pulled down. We still need to see RSI crossing. We still need to see RSI crossing back below its overbought line, right? Look at inflation. Uh, unemployment looks really good at the moment. We've got a really good labor market at the moment at 3.6%. But the previous cycles tell us that unemployment tends to lag. That was Anna's question earlier in the week. And that makes sense because it's generally over time is where the adjustment takes place. Over time, hours start coming down first. Once, once you've used up your sort of buffer in terms of overtime, then you'll start cutting back on employees okay? because you've got to control your margins. All right, GDP growth has already started. All right, I think that there is a real uh, possibility here that we see a kick up in unemployment after some sort of lag, and that is stagflation. That's that's the issue. That's what central banks are, are, are facing them are facing right now, and all of them can do very little close to zero in terms of the blue line. Okay, I can only try and manipulate the black line here, but it's really the blue line that's doing the damage in these spikes, the BPR. That's that cost push inflation, right? So what does that mean for us as traders? So this is where it gets interesting now, right? This is where it gets interesting to us. Well, it means there's opportunity. Now, remember, we're looking at a monthly chart and it's long term. This is, this is, um, We've gone back to this, uh, the late 60s here. So everything we're looking at here is um, not very granular. It's no good in terms of timing, okay? But it's very good in terms of what we should be uh, looking to uh, looking for or expecting. So let's add in let's add in uh, the S&P 500. Now this is obviously too crowded here. So what I want to do is I'm going to put the S&P on a uh, underneath. Okay. Let's put that in. All right, that's obviously because we're looking at such a long term, we're looking at such a long term, it's very difficult to see what's going on here. 
Well, one of the ways to fix this, just change your scaling here to logarithmic. It will help. Now, when the employment kicks up, when the employment kicks up, look what happens to the markets. Sorry, when unemployment kicks up. When unemployment. Big cell down here. Okay. Unemployment kicks up. Okay. There is a sell down, uh, then a recovery, then a big sell down again. Unemployment kicks up here. Sell down. Okay. Now, these are vicious. Uh, the reason that it looks like a little dip is because we're looking over uh, you know, a 50 year time frame. So the, these dips, if I have to, if I have to zoom in here, you'll get an idea of, of the dip. Now this is one, two, three, four, five months of dip there. Um, next one. Yeah. Uh, we can even, even go to the global financial crisis. Yes, unemployment jumping up. Okay, what's happening to our uh, market? Big bear market. All right, so the, the situation here is now nerve wracking. Okay. Nerve wracking because we haven't seen the kick up in this unemployment, which tends to lag. And these spikes. So there seems to be some sort of co causality. There seems to be some sort of causation. Very, very uh, interesting for us because if we're on the right side of the market, we can potentially take advantage of this. So it looks like we're going to get this um, lag in unemployment. The the market here, if the pattern holds, and that's a big if. I'm going to just explain that in a moment. Then. Um, we could be in for a, a big bear market. It hasn't even really sort of um, hasn't really um, started yet. Now there is an obvious bias. There is an obvious bias that I'm putting in here. Uh, let me just close that. Uh, what's the bias? The bias is what is what we call time period bias. Okay, time period bias just means clearly the variables on the ground are different today than they were in 73, 79, 90, 2000, 2007, that they're different, okay? uh, which means that, that the, the markets may react differently. That's what a time series um, bias is. It's, it's a statistical error. So we must be cognizant that what we're talking about here is a probability, it's a hypothesis. We've got to decide how, um, we've got to decide how realistic is this hypothesis um, but I'm of the opinion that it's quite realistic okay let me show you why okay this is the next part of it okay the next part of this we're going to add in the repo rate so let's go here Uh, not the repo rate, I think it's the Fed's fund rate. Um, thinking of the wrong country. Uh, Fed funds rate, I'll take it one. Fed funds rate, we're going to add that in. All right. Mm, I've just made a mistake there, though. I just want to take this out. Sorry, I've made a mistake there. Um, let's add it in again. Uh, I want a new price scale. Okay, that's going to be better. Yeah, that's better. All right, let's just, uh, there's so much here, uh, it's really messy. I'm going to just try and make this as thick as can be. Okay, so we, we want to look now at the uh, federal funds rate. It's increasing at the time that the unemployment, uh, it starts increasing before the unemployment kicks up, uh, which is probably a major factor why we're getting a push down in the stock market because um, required rate required rate of returns your your r and your time value of money equation starting to increase similarly here rates increasing that seems to put a little bit of a break on the market yeah, at the at the at the best we can say this is going sideways um, this is interesting here. We've got the repo coming down here, but perhaps this increase over there may have done some damage. There, there's a bit odd. 
Okay. Um, over here, rates have increased, prompting the decline. Over here, rates have increased, prompting the decline. I think I'll go back here and say the rates increase over here, prompted the decline. Okay. So the increase in interest rates are affecting the uh, the required rate of return. The required rate of return is an integral part of valuations. It means that valuations start getting pressured and we see the bear markets ensue. The bear markets ensue, okay, um, just as the unemployment rate starts kicking up. So we haven't got this unemployment rate kicking up yet, but we haven't really got the interest rate kicking up yet. It's only just sort of started moving up. We, we're at the beginning of the first hiking cycle. How scary is that? So we've got this, uh, we've got this uh, growth coming down. That's this orange line here. We've still got inflation moving up. That's the blue and the black line here. We're still waiting for the lag in unemployment to kick up. Uh, that generally takes place a little bit after rates start increasing. Once those rates start increasing, um, employees getting laid off. Bear market, we get a big push down here. Okay, so you can see that. Well, that all is extremely, extremely nerve wracking. See that? Extremely nerve wracking. Now, you go through to yesterday's price action. Let's go through to, let me just change this layout to our main layout. Let's just go through to our main layout here. And um, now that we've done the fundamental analysis, how does this tie in with the uh, technicals? Well, here's the Dow. We've always said, is this a bear market rally? We've asked that question consistently now for weeks. Go to the DAX. Okay. This is a 62% uh, retracement. What's the question we've asked for weeks? Because we, we didn't know the answer. It's just a question we asked, and we said it's uh, there's a there's a possibility it is. It is a bear market rally. Okay. So you can see that DAX Dow. Let's take a look at FTSE. Okay, FTSE is actually doing uh, not too bad. I would suggest one of the reasons the FTSE is uh, holding its own, it's got a huge commodity weighting, right? Royal Dutch Shell had a terrific, terrific uh, result yesterday. A lot of the heavyweights there are, are benefiting from the commodity cycle. So uh, FTSE, perhaps a standout, perhaps a standout here, but given what the Bank of England has said yesterday, I think caution still very much warranted, right? And by the way, I think that there's a good chance that uh, the Fed is in a similar position within a couple of meetings. I think they'll, they'll come up with a similar similar statement. One of the one of the interesting banks to keep an eye on is the ECB. They seem to be dragging their feet, but um, you know that might be uh, that might be the appropriate action. Because what can you do in in stagflation? A central bank can do very little in stagflation. Very little, but if you don't do anything, well, uh, you know your uh, the, the citizens of that country uh, are going to see that sort of your policymakers are doing nothing. There'll be a complete outcry. So it's a stagflation is the worst place for policymakers to be because there's very little they can do. You sort of damned if you do, you damned if you don't. Um, that's the that's the current environment we're in. So you can see that the um, the environment here, very, very tough environment. Of course, it brings us down to the US dollar now. I'm, a, I'm finding this analysis of the greenback very hard because I'm of the opinion that it is due to move higher. I'm of that opinion, but it's very, very overbought. I would be much more comfortable if it gets sold off and look to see for support in that dip. But at the moment, it's just running absolutely rampant. 
Look at this when we change this to the monthly charts. Just look at the, the length of last month's dollar. You take a look at the range. The range is huge. That's huge volatility. What's volatility? It's uncertainty. It's risk. Look at that. It's, it's crazy. It's now six days into May, and we've got a really significant candle here. You know, so uh, the idea is that um, uh, Zanette is saying this is probably a level to watch. Probably watch this level here. See if uh, if it hits this resistance, and I think that's fair enough. Absolutely, Zanetta. Um, but the the um, I think the big factor, the big factor here is um, we're in a very different economic environment than we've been in for since the late 70s, early 80s, in my opinion. So it's very difficult to use recent um, analysis sort of theory because stagflation is a paradox. You don't get high inflation, low growth. You don't get that. It's not normal, but you do in a stagflation environment. That's what we find to. Um, how do we alleviate that? I, I, I wish I had the answer. I was thinking maybe governments can sort of put in some sort of subsidy for fuel prices, but um, you know, I haven't really investigated that solution. I don't know how realistic it is. If you go through to um, the oil price, okay, it's starting to move. It's starting to move. Look, it's breaking out of our, it's breaking out of our pennant. See that? Starting to get pretty close to breaking out of our pennant. So uh, uh, the the idea here is, uh, you know, just caution. Um, we'll see. Uh, stagflation environment uh, is a, you know, it's it's a, a paradox. It's an ugly place to be. Guess what? That's where we're at. That's exactly where we're at. Let's see if we can uh, capitalize on that. Any um, any questions? Please go ahead and talk us through. Thank you, Zanetta. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Any other any other questions, guys? So, what are the opportunities? So, the opportunities, Anna, come from again uh, seeing if this hypothesis plays out. It looks as if the risk markets are really teetering, doesn't it? Now, again, it's very very important. We understand that there is a bias. There's a time series bias automatically built into this analysis because the variables are different. Markets may react differently, but if they act the same, Anna, you know, we can still short the market. We can still short the market, right? Uh, we can still look at the, um, perhaps it's the havens that start showing some sort of um, uptrend. The markets look like they're going to move. As any time there's movement, Anna, we can potentially take advantage of those movements. So um, there is opportunity. Any other questions there? All right. Uh, remember, this afternoon we will be doing that live trade NFP. Look forward to seeing you guys there. Thank you very much for joining me this morning and uh, speak to you a bit later in the day.